For my brother. For my sister. For London. For family. Assassin's Creed Syndicate.
Lucy Thorne. And so in order to do that, she takes part of a black box mission. Now to us, black box means that the player gets to choose their uh, the way they complete their objective. We give you a target, and then we let you go. So we give you information about what opportunities might be available, but it's, it's all up to the player. Once you get into the mission, that's where you get into the choice of uh, mechanics. That's where you see the differences in skills. Where with Eevee, you'll see Chameleon, which allows her to hide in plain sight right in front of enemies. They can walk right past her, which allows her to, as soon as she comes to a stop, she's invisible to enemies. It's a, it's a great skill, and it really, it's a late game skill, so it adds a lot uh, once you've earned that skill and built up uh, the experience and the skill points to spend on that. I think fans of uh, black boxes will be excited. We're going to try to kind of evolve and push the mechanic, you know, even more. Uh, so this is the, by far the most amount of black boxes in any Assassin's Creed to date. So there's uh, definitely going to be a lot of interesting things to see how players kind of strategize and use the different investigations that they go through leading up to the black boxes to figure out how they're going to take down your final target. And uh, the Voltaic Bomb uh, is uh, a brand new weapon, sort of a focus of the era. So electricity and that sort of power is brand new. And what it does is you can drop it at your feet and it'll electrify enemies nearby you and cause them to stun. Uh, they'll take damage from it as well. So it's, all, it's very effective as an escape tool and it's also very effective as a first strike tool. So you can toss it at enemies, a group of enemies, and then it'll arm to multiple enemies and hit them all in sequence and do damage to all of them. It's, it's a really fun one. They're also great to toss at rival gang members when they're in carriages chasing you down the streets of London too. It's just a troll. It's just like the best with everybody, yeah. yeah. I've been waiting for Gamescom for a very long time. Uh, you know, we wanted to make sure that Jacob and Evie both had the spotlight. So Jacob had E3, Evie's got Gamescom. So it's great to finally talk about her. Everyone was wondering if she's going to have like one mission and that's it in the game. Uh, that is not at all the case. There's plenty of missions for Evie. And then of course, as Scott was explaining with the open world, you can play as much of Evie as you want. I don't know about for you guys, but in a typical IC game, I'm putting in about 70 to 90 hours. So it's pretty much down to player choice at that point in time. It's great to show her, and I think she's a she's a really interesting addition to the franchise, to the syndicate as well, because she, like I said, she allows us to tell two sides of that story. Uh, for me personally, as an Assassin's Creed fan, I like uh, I like that sort of mystery and uh, uh, what are the Templars doing? What are the Assassins up to? Which historical characters were a part of one group or the other? And Evie really delves into that. So I, I love. Uh, what she brings to the story. Yeah. Actually, just one thing I'd add to that, what Scott was saying, what we also wanted to do very early on is we didn't want to have the, one of the main focus in terms of the narrative, the story of the game, to be around a love story. We wanted to do something different this time. So having that brother and sister relationship, seeing that sibling rivalry going on and poking fun at each other, uh, it's definitely going to have a good, you know, some good laughs as you play through the game for sure. Yeah, I remember you talking about this last night, how you guys were just reading through the script and just laughing. Focus back at the basics, make sure 
but a great, amazing one. So it was really about focusing, improving concepts early. Uh, we did focus group testing pretty aggressively, probably more aggressively than we have in the past. And we've had playable builds for quite some time. Builds. We did one unique for E3, and we did one for Gamescom. So we really want players to get, you know, put their hands on the controller, put the hood up, and really get into the demos. Yeah, and, and I mean, you guys getting your hands on the demo, like that's um, you, you can tell us what to do. You can tell us like your feedback, you know, like you know, like, uh, and that's and, 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 you know, we, we, we just, uh, that happened at E3, right? That happened. There was a worldwide. Oh, 
buildings, the widest streets, these huge expanses. So it provided a new challenge for our quarter, which was built for you know, smaller scale, shorter buildings of the past time periods of Assassin's Creed. So we needed to do something that was uh, special for our time period. The rope launcher really complements that. What we found in playtests is that players use the boat. So we don't find that uh, they've stopped using parkour because they have a boat launcher. No, they, they choose when they use each one. So when you want to go really high or really quick, just tap that button and go up. And when you want to have precision or you want to get on a specific rooftop or near a nice day, you tend to use the parkour. So it's it's great to see the mix of the two that players actually use. Yeah, I uh, I, I love the rope launcher personally. I think it's like a really when I first used it, I was like, holy crap! Like I just scaled that building in one second, and that that is like a that's a game changer. When you do it on uh, St. Paul's Cathedral, it's Big Ben. Oh, yeah. Big ben. Oh, yeah, ben. Super high, so you go up pretty quickly. I also like to use it when I'm like running across the rooftops and then quickly using it to snap across the street and then continue my parkour experience. Nice. But, I feel like there's going to be some traditionalists who are like, yeah, man, I'm only parkour. I think one of the best benefits we've seen is that the use of fast travel is way down. And I consider that a huge, yeah. a huge bonus. The fact that the player spending their time traveling the city rather than just saying, ah, it's too far, I'm going to skip it. So fast travel, so there's no way to to travel. Yeah. Hijack a carriage, yeah. use a rope I'm sure there's a lot of means to kind of get momentum moving forward so you get across the city pretty quickly. Well, I think for myself, I never really relied on the fast travel too much unless I was like really going fast or right? a limited time. But I think that with like the introduction of carriages, like that's going to be kind of a game changer. Actually, have it like that, uh, and he 
people are having a hard time understanding when they're in gang wars and when there's multiple fights going on, who's my ally, who's my foe. So there was, it's one of those things that took us months to really align around from a visual standpoint and a design standpoint as, as you know, that's the ship that Scott is driving. So, uh, but eventually it's, we landed where we're at today, which actually I'm, I'm pretty happy with. Yeah. It's pretty obvious, you know, what's going on. Yeah, the, the rooks look the way they do, so that it's, it's easy to know who is who. And because players, they're sort of the innate uh, red equals bad guy and green equals good guy. That it, it's sort of just like video game 101, sort of everyone knows it. And we couldn't really fight it, basically. When, when we started playtesting, we knew, like, okay, players, they understand a certain thing. Let's do that. Yeah. So for the police, the neutral faction, it was obvious, we'll just go blue. So and it made sense because that's their outfits at the time anyway. So it kind of all worked out in the end. Cool, yeah. And you're a cosplay, right? Yeah, yes. so it's, it's very, it's, it's like very curious about the, the costumes there. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, actually at, uh, at the E3, we had a Rooks cosplayer. Uh, and she was, yeah, she was awesome. She was great, right? Yeah, she had the whole like top of like the bowler hat and the yellow band around it. Yeah, yeah, we all got our bands. Yeah, that's cool. Great, yeah. Uh, shout out to the Ray that for you guys are. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Alright, uh, I think that's that's about time for uh, the questions. If you guys want to give a round of applause, I think that's Thanks for coming by. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks so much.